Hello everybody and welcome back to our Unreal Engine 4 and Playfab integration. This episode we're going to be looking into automation, which is cloud scripts, rules and scheduled tasks. So over this episode we're going to look at the basics of cloud scripts and everything you need to know in order to understand them, how you can set up rules and scheduled tasks to work side by side that will help improve your game. So let's get started. So let's begin with cloud scripts. We can access this via the automation cloud scripts tab. Now inside of here, you have three tabs. Overview, which shows the basic times, functions, and errors that might happen within your play script within the last 24 hours. You have revision, which is basically your cloud script. Now by default, this automatically has quite a few comments and example functions for you to look at. I would leave all of these in for now and just add to it. This is just in case you need something, it might already be there and you can simply copy and paste it rather than having to search online how to do it. And then there's functions, which you can see is still in preview. This is something new and something that we won't be touching for the meantime. We may get round to it on a separate episode further down the line in the series, but for now, just ignore this. This is basically just external functions that you can call through Microsoft. So let's have a look at the actual Cloud Script itself. There is already some information on what cloud scripts are at the very top in this little comment bubble. However, in general, it basically means that you can implement logic for your game that is safe from client side exploits, basically hacking, because it runs on the server side of Playfab, meaning that it's just a lot easier and it automatically detects anything that might go wrong. You also need some variables that are passed straight through through Playfab, like the Playfab ID of the current user who's calling the function, which if you're going to pass that through to the engine might get distorted or might not work. So unless the person knows the massive, long, unique ID of their player in Playfab, they're not going to be able to call a function through the engine through some sort of hack in order to update it because it requires that in order to do so. And the cloud script, because it's run on the server side, checks against it anyway. So let's have a look at the basics of the cloud script. You'll be able to do pretty much everything that you would inside of the Unreal Engine, however, executing it via the cloud script. So there are some basic functions already in the cloud script for you to look at. But it's basic things like setting statistic values of the player, updating player data and getting title data, any sort of entity objects, um, updating levels, via the data um, even stuff as simple as updating the move of a player so that you can save it further down the line all of this is already shown as an example on how to use now they don't include everything that you can do from this there is a lot and i do mean a lot of stuff that is open through the playfab api cloud script so the best thing for you to do is just look online or just start experimenting with it in order to find what you can and cannot do within within cloud script however there is a lot you can do some things to note is that there is a limit on the amount of uh, api calls that you can make per function i believe this is set to five so you don't genuinely want to make too many calls within one function the calls are basically things like getting data or setting data from within the call. It's fine to do so if you have a couple, and I would also recommend looking into putting them all under one variable rather than calling each one individually. What I mean by this is if we have a look at some of the examples that I've already written, here where you can get title data, the keys are actually an array, so you can just put in as many as you want and get them but like it'll search for them all and return them all under this one variable rather than continuously using different variables in order to get the, the title data that you need. This will just save on your API calls, which will make it a lot better to be able to do more complex functions. There is also other things to note within this. You can log data depending on what type of log that you want. You have info, debug and error. These will also show up within Playfab on what logs are being printed. You can also return data specific with a, a key and the value of it. Again, this is done in the form of a JSON. And you can even make HTTP calls through the API. Now, obviously this will require some setup that we're probably not going to go into 
from yourself or from your development team in order to publish the data to an external API. Some of this is already given examples within Cloud Script already for you to look at if you actually want to do this sort of thing. But again, we're not going to be touching on that. So that's the basics of Cloud Script. Now let's jump to rules. Within rules, you can simply create particular events that fire automatically from an event that happens with the player. The easiest way to do this is just to show you by creating a rule together that we can go over and look at all the different things that are explained. So let's do that. So we'll go to new rule and in here we'll just put in test uh, default value. I'll just test default actually. And then under event type, you can see here there is a lot of stuff that will automatically happen when certain things happen to the player. Some to note are title added and title removed. You're probably not going to use the player remove title sort of call, but the added title is very good for setting up unique and default values for player data. What I mean by this is that this is basically called when the player first starts the game for the very first time and as shown in the last episode when you hit the created ball on the login with Steam it will automatically create the account. So once it's created the account it will then call player added title. Once it does this you can then set up basic values that the player will have or should have by default as player data. So things like number of wins just default it to zero number of losses default it to zero in in an example by doing this you won't have as many issues down the line when setting the data or getting it when the player first begins their first match in something because the values will already exist otherwise you could face the problem of receiving null values or null data and then it could throw up a lot of errors that might end up biding hours and hours of time just to realize that the player doesn't actually have that data so I would always recommend that any sort of default values that you want and are probably going to need should be done via the player added title others to note are probably login so this will automatically be called anytime the player logs into the game basically whenever they launch the game um, this is useful for doing checks if you have something like a daily reward say if you're doing a mobile game and you have a daily reward for the player this would be useful if you can claim the daily reward directly from within the main menu and something that, the, that you want the player to have access to straight away so it might create like a pop-up window that says that you can claim the reward because it's been longer than the 24 hours you would hook this up as player logged in you would create a function that would check the last time uh, the reward was claimed make sure it was over 24 hours if it was then you would return true if it's not then you return false and then within the engine you would hook something up that would say if the return value is true create the pop-up and allow them to be able to claim the reward for some of the others if we just have a quick scroll down this list you'll see quite a lot of different ones now there are some that are specific to mobile such as send push notification so you could do something that happens on a push notification there are also some that are specific to non-Steam, so things like Add. Now, obviously, this is probably most likely going to be mobile anyway, but I bring Steam up because Steam, within their terms of service, do not allow you to have ads. So this is useless if your game is only going to be running on Add. Don't bother trying to put something on this. There are things like Band. So you can, you can set up uh, ban and warning systems for players. If they're banned, you could then set something up so that if once the player gets banned, you could have something pop up on their screen. This will probably be something more complex of a sort of thing because you'd also have to create a tracking system for the player, or like you don't want them just to be instantly banned unless it's by yourself for some reason. So that's probably something that's a little bit more advanced that we might get into in the future. Now, if you're hooking up some of the multiplayer side of things using the servers that PlayFab allow you to do, which again will be another topic that we hopefully will touch further down the line. There are some things like join lobby, left lobby, matched with lobby. These will be useful for if you want um, a system similar to Dota's in the way that it requires you to accept the match once it's found the match. So it doesn't automatically put you in to the game. It, it will create like um, an exception where you everyone has to then press accept in order to join into the game rather than forcibly log everybody into the game and move them across to the server 
looking through, there's some other things as well to do with um, purchases. This again will be pretty useful down the line if you want something to happen when they purchase something. So you want some sort of pop up to happen up on screen or to take them somewhere within the game once they purchase something. Some of the others in here you're probably not going to really use, like stuff like executed cloud script is one at the top. Unless you want something to happen every single time a player runs a cloud script or a specific cloud script, which I'd highly advise because if you if your game becomes quite successful and you have a lot, and I mean a lot of calls to cloud script, this will then create more cloud script functions being called, which obviously Playfab will probably moan about. Um, and that's the rest. That's it, really. Um, you could, there's also some other ones like Photon, which is an add-on. We'll probably get to that later on in the series again. Photon is pretty useful for mobile, um, but not so much for Steam. And then I do believe there's also a way to create event types. Now, this is not something that I have looked much into, but theoretically, through the Microsoft Azure stuff, you should be able to create event types for this to be able to run. However, again, we probably won't touch into this because that's using some external stuff and third party and it is quite complex to get set up as well as creating accounts for it so we're probably not going to look into that so for now let's just put in the title added one and show you what happens after this so you can see here that there is conditions and actions you can also see that there is learn about play uh, play stream events again this is something that you probably want to look into if you're interested in the more specific things and this goes through each event that can be ran through the rules but with a little bit more description about them we've only covered the basics of one but there as you can see here there is a lot of stuff that you can do now in conditions you can set up specific conditions for them for this rule to fire so it might fire every single time that the player add the title is called however you if you're using something else like login you might want it to happen on a certain thing rather than every single time for every single player you might want it to only happen on a certain platform maybe if it was mobile say if your game was ios android and steam you might only want something to happen say on a push notification as long as that platform is ios or android you don't want it to happen on steam so that can be pretty useful as well as all the other things here but most of the time especially for player added title you probably not want to have any conditions in the action section you can see this is where you set up what actually happens when this rule is fired so there's set push notification obviously specific to probably mobile send email this is more more advanced stuff for when you're when you get the players to set up an actual account within playfab as in the 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 player can attach an email a username and a password which allows for cross platform hookups between say like steam and ios it allow the same account to be accessed on both platforms this then would allow you to have an email associated with your account and then if something happens you could send specific emails to certain users this is quite advanced we're, we're not going to touch on this really unless we go into very specific pl pl uh, cross platform but i seriously doubt it there is a way to increment player statistics, however with this it only increments it, you can't specifically change it to a certain value. So if you know that you want the the increment of the player statistic to be zero, which is probably the most common to set up the basic one as zero or to do something else, then you're probably not going to really use this. There is grant virtual currency, this can be quite handy. Um, for other event types, probably not player added title, unless you want them to start with a certain virtual currency. Now this can be useful for games on mobile that have a life system. So some of like the match three games where you have say five or ten lives and they go down each level that you play. When they add the title, you need to give them the lives otherwise they're not going to have anything to play with obviously this might not be the case if you decide to go down like a tutorial route where they don't really use lives for the first couple of levels but most of the time grant virtual currency can be quite useful um if you have initial values that the player should have there is grant item which grants an item but it has to be already set up on the store side of things which will be a series down further down the line on the store 
and everything within stores that you can do on Playfab. This might be useful for specific events or certain things that happen to give the player the item. There's Execute Cloud Script, which we're probably going to be using most of the time because you have a lot more control inside of there. You can do all of these from within Cloud Script itself, but this one allows you to have a bit more control over what you do with it. So you can grant an item from Cloud Script or you can grant virtual currency from within a Cloud Script. But it, this is most useful for what we're going to be doing because we want to set up a default value for a player data. Again, there's execute Azure function, which we may not go into again until a further episode, but this is like the external functions that you can do via HTTP for more specific, more advanced things, but we're not gonna do all this. There's delete player and ban player. Now again, this is probably something that we'll touch on further down the line when we've got a lot more stuff set up within Playfab and it's a bit more usable, but for the meantime, we're just going to ignore it. So let's set up execute cloud script. So in here, you can see that we can publish results as a play stream event, similar to how you would inside the engine. So you probably want to have that ticked in order for it to show up inside of data. You can select the cloud script function that you want to run. Now this will use your most recent live version of cloud script, I believe it is. And you'll be able to see all of the functions that you currently have. Most of these, as you can see here, are ones that are the default ones from within cloud script. And then here is any arguments that you pass in. So in a minute, we're gonna hop back over to our cloud script and set up a very basic function to set a player data default value to zero, say. Say wins or losses or something like that. Now we might have to pass in an argument here. So if we do, then I'll show you how to set it up once we do so. You can also add multiple actions. So again, say if you have a lot of default data to set for between each new player that begins your game for the very first time and given the limit of five calls per maximum function you might need a couple of these execute cloud scripts so you it will run the first one then it will run the next one and then it will run the next one each set in all the default values that you need so if this is something you need you just simply need to do add action and carry on as it was before and this finally brings us to scheduled tasks now scheduled tasks are a way to automatically fire an event. And what I mean by this is via a certain date or time. Well, it's be probably best just to show you. So let's go to new scheduled task. We'll set up test task. You can give it a description. This is easier. Once you have a lot of these, it will, it will be displayed in a table and having the description there, given exactly what this does, will probably help you a lot more than the name. Um, in here, there's only a few things that you can do. You can insight scaling. That's something quite new to Playfab. Um, run cloud script function once, which is probably what you're going to do more. There's run cloud script as your function once and run actions on each player in each segment. So if you want something to happen ooh, every, every 24 hours, that would affect the shop and say like you have a rotating shop that goes in and out of different stores you probably just want it to do run cloud script function once and this will update whichever store you've told it to update passing in the arguments and whichever function you call the run actions on each player in a segment is useful if you want to add new data to each player once the game is already live so what I mean by this is the the player added title rule that will that we're going to set up shortly won't have ha won't happen again. It only happens once. And if you have new player data that you want to keep track of, and you you want to default everyone to a certain value instead of having to go through every single player, which you, as you can see up in this top left hand corner allows you to have a hundred thousand with the free account. It could very quickly take some time so the easiest way to do this is just go into the run actions on each one there's no current segment um, but these are very easy to set up the best one to have is all players and then simply all you'll do is execute cloud script again the only reason that this doesn't have segments defined is because it's a brand new 
title that I've created just to do these examples with. It's probably not going to be called very often, but most of the time you'll have a few by default. This will be all players all players live within the last two weeks i.e they have logged into your game and paying players because playfab will automatically track players value to date then within uh, the scheduled task you will need to set up whether it's manual or recurring so if it's something you're going to update manually say it doesn't happen very often say once a year then just do it manual if it's going to happen every i don't know say week if it's a store update, you're going to need to select reoccurring. Now, this will use a cron expression. If you haven't used used or generated one of these before or even heard of it, they give a link in order to have a look at how to generate one. So it will have already an example of using the current time or a random time to show you what can happen. The best way to do this is just to click on examples down in the top left hand corner if you're unsure of this. And this will give you a list of most of the ones that you're probably going to look for. Now, it can't do everything, especially when there's gaps within the time. So you can see here that it can do minutes very easily and hours. However, when it gets to days, you can't do one day, then miss a day, then do the day, like do the next day. That's quite hard to do because it's not a constant, especially given the fact that we have seven days a week. If you wanted a specific day, however, or every seven days or every week on a certain day then it's easy to do the these already have them as examples so they even have up to a year so if you're going to have something happen every year then you might as well just use this rather than create that rather than do it manually but say say we want it to happen every day once a day it automatically generates it for you here and as you can see it happens at midnight now this this just is using the cron and it means at midnight however due to the fact that playfab won't won't update fast enough for this to happen especially with the amount of projects and servers they have it can be a minute or two on either side so it can be a minute or two beforehand or it can be a minute or two afterhand this is useful to know because you if you have something say like a store in in your game and it updates at midnight to change over you need a way to be able to allow for this time variation so if somebody's in the store as this happens as soon as it hits midnight you need a way to be able to make sure that they maybe can't buy anything anymore until the actual server receives the update call from playfab otherwise they may be able to buy things that are no longer in store for anyone else and obviously then other people are going to feel cheated so the best way to do that is just keep an eye on it and allow for that sort of thing maybe have something in that says once the timer has reached that time using the um the standard time of playfab then lock off the store to stop anyone from using it but again that's more advanced and we'll probably get to that inside the store and items of the uh, series uh, series episode that will happen further down the line so with this cron all you need to do is copy it and paste it into the expression this will automatically just accept the expression as long as it's a valid one and it will happen at this time there's no way to test that this works especially given the fact that we currently don't have a set uh, player segment i mean you could just simply run cloud script once and make sure that the expression is set for say the nearest hour to what you are or even the next minute or something but obviously be careful if you set it to reoccur every minute be careful that you don't that you remember to turn it off otherwise you could have playfab then moaning at you because there's a call going out every single minute calling a function that does nothing or might even have an error in it because we're so early on you don't want this to happen so if you're going to do this just try and do it once keep an eye on it or even just do it manually and make sure it works and then make sure that you set it back to what you need or even just deactivate it. You could just simply set it to not active so at least then it won't call it continuously. So then let's get back to our cloud script and create a basic function for us to set a basic player data. So we're just going to create a basic function. Now in order to do this, as you can see, there's quite a lot around, you can do handlers, dot and then your function name so we're going to call ours uh, test set default 
player values equals function arguments and context. Now arguments is obviously shortened to args, but it doesn't really matter. The easiest way to do this is just to copy and paste an already existing function header and just simply change the, the function name if you're going to be doing a lot of these, especially if you don't know them all for the first time. Once you have this, then we need to get and set the player data. Due to you probably calling this um, on player added title, there isn't going to be any data available. So doing stuff like this here, get user data, isn't really going to be necessary because it doesn't exist. So the easiest way is to just simply create the data by using server dot update user data and then follow the examples that already exist in the client so you need to put in your brackets you then need playfab id colon then current player id the current player id is whoever is making this call so this is a way of playfab verifying who is making the call and also to stop anyone from doing it falsely. This is because each player has quite a long unique identifier code called their playfab ID, which is a way of identifying who is who basically. And it's also quite a long code, which hopefully should stop people from hacking in order to update their values de by default. Once you have that, we need to create a new line and data colon, then create your brackets. And then in here, you'll have the JSON value, which will be the name of the, uh, the data that you want to put in and its default value. So here we're going to put in wins and then we're going to put in zero. So what this will do is create a user data called wins for the specific player that's calling this, i.e. the one that's calling it via title added. And then they're going to be setting it to zero. Now it Playfab does handle numbers, but it's easier usually to set it as a string, like this. This is just because when, when Playfab returns data, i.e. when you call get player data, it will return it as a JSON string value. So it is usually presented as a string. Now obviously, it is easier in engine to convert this to what you need, especially if it's going to be something like a, a string to number because they already exist or a string to bool. However, Playfab does support some of these things. You can return bools, i.e. false and true. You can return numbers and you can return strings as well as arrays and objects, but they're a little bit more complex and we'll get into them further down the line. So now that we have this, the easiest way to, to test this is to test it by creating a player um, on our Playfab account and making sure that this function gets called. So all we need to do now is save and make sure that you click deploy this version after save, then go to your rules, create the rule again that we were using because obviously we came out of it, it didn't save. So we want to go to player added title. We want to set up the action of execute cloud script. We want to test player data Ah, test set default player values is what we called it, sorry. You don't need to publish this one, but it's probably handy that you do. And we didn't pass through any arguments. So all we're going to do here is just save. And you can see here that it has saved the rule and it even has a rule ID. Now, as far as I know, you don't have access to this ID anywhere else, but they do provide it, which can be quite useful, probably for some of the more advanced things down the line. So now if we go to our players and from here you can actually add new player if we add the new player and just allow it to generate this custom id for it create and login player this should then fire the default player added title because technically they have, they have added the title as you can see here it's created it from the usa it has all of the details it has a custom link because obviously we haven't hooked it with steam because it doesn't really exist and then hopefully if we go back to the player data title, you'll see, yep, there we are. It set wins to a value of zero by default. So that is now up and running. I did have to go back, however, and double check 
the function because I didn't put a capital U on update for update user data. Playfab is very specific on capitalization and correctness. So the tiniest, tiniest little thing can sometimes break it. Now capitalization obviously isn't going to affect it isn't going to check it when when you save it however if you put something in that it knows is wrong so if you put a semicolon in next to the playfab id instead of colon it will come back and it won't let you actually publish it to live because it knows there's an error there so it sometimes it will help sometimes it won't so just double check when you're going over some of these things that is correctly working however as we have just shown this is now working we have a way to be able to set a default value to a player data called wins of zero to every player that adds the title for the first time this can be very useful as i said for setting default values and i think with that it has brought the end of this episode so today we have looked at the basics of cloud script rules and scheduled tasks now within here there is reward ads and a b tests as well we're going to be covering this on a separate video much further down the line the a b test will come with experiments which is sort of new to playfab and the rewards ads we may look into when we also look at things like photon as an add-on however because most of the most of the time i'm going to be using specifically steam steam not allowing ads means that it, we can't functionally test the rewarded ads however it is quite good for mobile if you want to just have a look at it you can basically make sure that it rewards whenever an ad is played so here you have ad views ads started ads closed ad end which as you noticed was also the events that happened within the rules so again you can run specific things off this and i believe you can also select yeah the the, the actual ad placements so if you wanted something to happen at a specific time say when a player loses a level you want to show them an ad in order to generate a new life or something like that they might have the option to watch an ad to gain life back this is very specific and useful here but again it's not really something we're going to look into if you want to look in that in your own time then you can do and i would suggest so if you're making a mobile game but again using steam for these examples we're not going to be doing so okay then i think that's that's it for everything in today's episode i believe next time we're going to be looking at player data and title data in like more specifically into the 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 player data side of things we've learned today how to set up the default value of uh, of a type of a player data however that's only setting it so that when the player first loads up the game for the very first time it sets it so that there's no more null pointers or nil refs basically however in the next episode we're going to be looking at actually integrating it into the engine how you can read it from either the api calls or the cloud script and then what you can do with that data along with the title data so until then guys i'll see you next time and have a nice day bye